Yo, what is up, Karma Nation? We are back at it again for another Prop Party Pod for this amazing week seven. Uh, I hope you had a great week six. Uh, I know we had a little rough patch there, but we're back to kill it. We've already uh, locked in a couple props already, so make sure to hop into our Discord uh, by getting our NFL core plays. Uh, we dropped some plays early on before the podcast, so make sure you get in early on. Uh, we had a pretty good... Uh, Pretty good Giants Eagles game. I hit a two for three, uh, and I dropped a couple prize picks plays that hit. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll be breaking down this weekend's uh, Monkey Knife Fight dot online and Prize Picks dot online slate. Make sure you use promo code Karma. Uh, I'm here with my boy Ethan as always. Yeah. How's your morning going? Morning's great. It's Ohio State football day. We're back. Big Ten football is back today. So let's get it. Uh, but no, outside of that, Joey, everything's going great. Congrats on your two for three win on Thursday. I know, I know we're due for a big week after we've gotten screwed over by some injuries lately and some fumbles. So, uh, and weather, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong for us these last two weeks. But, uh, we started off the year strong, hit a rough patch, but we're going to be back at it. Um, uh, my free Twitter price pick play that I posted on uh, DFS Karma on Twitter. It's free. A Evan Ingram over. That hit easily. So uh, make sure you follow our Twitter page. Make sure you're in Discord. We do about free stuff all the time. So come check us out. Why not? So I'm ready to get after it. We dropped a big, big play last night. I mean, yesterday afternoon. Um, and this is why you need to be in Discord, to be honest with you. So in the – oh, what game is it, Joey? New Orleans Saints game. Yeah, uh, it was the early shootout, though, we got. Yeah, Sanders ruled out yesterday afternoon. Michael Thomas ruled out yesterday afternoon. We got Kamara over 6.5 receptions paired with Adams over 85, 85.5 yards. Um, that's our kind of big play for the week. We dropped it in Discord. Obviously, it's changed a lot now. Oh yeah, Kamara should not be that low in reception since he'll be kind of the main ball hog there. But we'll talk more about Kamara later. So. Yeah, he's due for a big game. Adams is due for a big game. I'm sure we're gonna get angry Rogers after he just got destroyed by Tampa. Yeah. So I'm excited for that one to hit. Um, but knowing our luck these last two weeks, it's probably Don't gonna be hurt. <laughs> yes, someone's gonna get hurt or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, make sure you check out our projections portal as well. Uh, it's free on the website. Just yeah. go to dfskarma.com and then go to the NFL tab and you'll find projections portal. Uh, Sam does all those either Thursday or Friday night, depending on injuries and COVID and everything. He's been having to reset everything every day just because of so injuries, many injuries. so much COVID. The whole Raiders line got uh, O line got it, and I think they did they move the Raiders game to uh, it Sunday got moved, night. Yeah, well, no, it got moved from Sunday night to Sunday afternoon. But if they have more positive tests, it will be removed again to Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, guys, if that whole line is out for Oakland, or I should say Vegas, take Jacob Jacobs under rushing yards. tanks has got the best rush defense in the league. <laughs> He's it's probably the harder. easiest bet in the world. If you yeah. have, if you're oh, on yeah. a sports book, just go pound that under real quick. Cause yeah, I mean it's too it's, easy. It's all practice players out uh, O one right now. Unless he breaks one for like fifty yards, I don't see ninety percent of his carries going past two yards. <laughs> if that, yeah, it's so, it's gonna be ugly. I mean, you can't lock that play in obviously until tomorrow afternoon. You know, or I mean, tomorrow morning when we get word on those offensive linemen. But hey, we'll be waiting for that news. We're going to drop it in Discord. So, another reason to be in our Discord. Yeah, hopefully, we get something good paired with them. If not, I'm just going to play them on DK Sportsbook. Um, Yeah. And and that's one thing Joey and I talked about pre pod is there's a lot of stuff we like on Monkey Night Fight right now, but it's just not paired with who we want. And with Monkey Night Fight, you know, you have to play the two props, the two players in the prop that you're given. So we're kind of waiting. And, and one thing with props is you kind of have to wait for the right pairing when you say Joey. Um, yeah. Cause 
two 50-50 props. You, even if you have one, like, lock, which is, like, a 90% prop, and then you're just stuck with another 50-50 prop, your odds just go way down. Uh, so yeah. it goes from an amazing play, just it's basically, like, a 50-50 coin toss. Um, even though you have one amazing play, the other play is just a toss-up, and it's not worth it sometimes. Yeah. So, and Joey and I are constantly looking at props on both on all sides um, throughout the day. So, hey, if it gets paired with something we like, we're going to jump on it. You know, a prime example was yesterday afternoon, Joey. We locked in that Camara Adams play. After we locked it in, probably what ten minutes later, Camara was pro- was uh, paired with Julio Jones, and we did not like Julio Jones at all for tomorrow. And he was at seventy five, right? Like yeah. Yeah, I mean seven seven point five, yeah. Yeah, seven point five, which I still, I don't mind seven point five, but yeah. you start getting closer to that fifty fifty that you talked about. Um, yeah, it's still give it like a sixty percent chance of going over, but yeah. with Julio, it's tough. I mean, a healthy Julio should go over, but I just don't know with that yeah, offense. Yeah, I remember he's going to be competing with Calvin Ridley, and you know, you just it's not you know Adams is Adams. He's the man in Green Bay. That's all they have, especially if Aaron Jones sits tomorrow, which he possibly could. Um, yeah. You know, Adams going to have a huge game, and I'm a huge Texans fan. Our defense blows chunks, so it's so bad. It's, it's it so might bad. be the worst defense in the league. No, that would be New York Jets, but close second. Yeah, we'll take second. But all right, Joe, you wanna go ahead and jump into this? Yeah. Um, let's see here. I'll have you start off. Uh okay. I think you're looking at the Washington Dallas game. Yeah, so I'm looking at the Washington Dallas game. Um I'll be honest with you guys, I got my ass killed last weekend with this Dallas game. I did not expect Zeke to fumble the ball two times in a row. That was rough. And I think they got, what, 21 points off turnovers? I mean, why, Zeke? Why? Hold on to the damn fucking ball. Uh, so frustrating. And then here's what made things bad, worse in the Dallas game. We had Hopkins under fourth quarter. So, Price Picks has these fourth quarter props, right? The whole second half, Murray completes one pass. In the fourth quarter on a third and two, to Hopkins for 60 yards. That ruined all my props. Why? Yeah, that was that was a little ridiculous. That is the type of stuff that's getting annoying fast. Um, so that was real shitty. Put me in a bad mood for the week. But we're back. It's a new week. So what I'm looking at is the two for two, which if you notice, Monkey Knife Fight has moved all two for twos up to 3.5x. So I would play a lot of two for twos and not so many five for five, stuff like that. Um, I'm looking at Elliot at 20.5 fantasy points and Terry McLaren at 16.5 fantasy points. I like both overs. So Washington is not a good football team. Neither is Dallas. I'm not saying Dallas is either because they're not, you know, they're definitely not a good football team. Not at all. They're not even favored against Washington, which is. Yeah, it's a pick'em game. So the game's a pick'em. The over-under is 45. I could see this turning into a sneaky shootout that, is kind of flying under the radar. Uh, so Zeke led the team in targets last week. First game without Des Prescott. He had 11 targets in the first game. Dalton did not have a lot of time to throw it, and he was just checking down to Elliott pretty much all game long. And luckily, Elliott was catching these passes. Washington gets a lot of pressure on quarterbacks. Their front seven is very good. Their secondary is not so good. I could see this game... I'm I'm torn on this game. I think Dallas wins this game, but I don't think it's going to be by passing the ball deep. I think it's going to be a lot of passes to Elliott, a lot of passes to the tight end Schultz, and a lot of running. Um, Dallas has a very beat-up O-line, but I like Elliott a lot in this game. I liked him a lot against Arizona. He let me down. He's not going to do it two weeks in a row. If you listen to Elliott's press conference after the game, he was pissed at himself. He was mad he's coming out looking to make some make some money, make some touchdowns. So when Dallas gets in the red zone, they're going to feed Zeke the ball because I don't think they trust Aim Dalton not to throw an interception. I mean, I think, Joe, you would agree Dalton looked terrible last week. He looked – I didn't expect him to be that bad. Like, I didn't think the drop-off from Dak to Dalton would be that bad, but apparently it was. Yeah, it was really bad. So, And even second half, you saw they were feeding Zeke some – 
their, their game plan is to feed Zeke. He is their best offensive weapon. He's their best player right now. You have to give Zeke. So either way, however the game strip goes, I think Zeke can go over. If they're winning, guess what? They're going to feed Zeke the ball. And if they're winning, it's probably because of him getting those touchdowns. If they're trailing, guess who's probably going to catch the passes? Zeke. So I like Zeke over 20.5. Um, Sam's DFS, um, our DFS Karma projection portal has him at 20.19. Um, but his ceiling, I think, is over 30 on that site. So, you know, that goes to show you, you know, if LA gets those two touchdowns, you know, he's going to go over 30 fancy points. So I like Zeke a lot in this matchup. And then the other side of it, Terry McLaren. Boy, the guy is a beast. I feel bad for he's him. He's so had good. Quarterbacks, but man. He is so good. He is the number one receiver on that team by a long shot. Uh, he had 12 targets last week. He has 58 on the year. Um, he leads the team in targets by a long shot. And they don't. And Washington does not have a running game. So I don't really see how Washington gets the lead against Dallas. I mean, I'm sure it will happen because nothing's going right right now. But if Dallas gets that lead, which I expect, Washington's going to have to throw the ball, which as we've seen – in the last, what, five, six weeks, you can pack on Dallas. <clears throat> yeah, they definitely. Have, they have their defense in the secondary. So 12 targets last week. I expect double-digit targets again this week. Um, let's just hope Kyle, Kyle Allen can throw the ball because he's not the best passer. But, you know, I expect Terry to have five, six catches, probably 70-something yards and a touchdown. Um, it probably, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes over 100 yards receiving. So, I like both overs in this game. It's not as good as the play we posted last night, but I think both of these guys can go over. I mean, Terry's in a smash spot. Elliot's in a smash spot. And I kind of look at Elliot how I look at Kamara. That's their offense. You know, passes are going to have to go to Elliot. Running's got to go through Elliot. When they're in the red zone, it's going to be Elliot. It's going to be Kamara. So... I love Elliott over. I love Kamara over. I love Terry McLaren over. Um, give me a three for three with those guys, and I'm going to play it for a GPP all day long. So um, that's what I'm looking at there. I don't really much. I don't really like much else in this game because one, I don't trust any Dalton. Two, they have Gibson in props. Who Gibson isn't really the main guy anymore, Joey. Yeah, it's uh, a tough situation for the running backs. Both are getting passing usage. JT is getting a little more passing usage, but Gibson's getting the red zone carries so yeah. it's kind of a toss-up really which one you want to do i like well, gibson and gpps this week but i don't know if i can play them in props yeah and, and they're playing pretty much it's a, the backfield's 50 50 pretty much i mean jd's playing slightly more than gibson for some reason um because i think gibson doesn't look that bad and we already know what jd can do he's been in the league for a little while um yeah. but outside of the elliot terry you know those two guys i don't really trust anybody else in this game just because I don't trust any Dalton throwing the ball. Uh, I don't trust Allen to throw the ball, except to Terry. So um, that's all I'm playing in this Dallas-Washington game. Uh, Joey, what do you got? Uh, So I'm looking at the Bills-Jets game. Uh, It should be – I don't even know what the line is on that one because it's going to be – it's going to be rough for the Jets. The Bills have been playing amazing. Uh Probably 10 or something, I would think. Yeah, let's see here real quick. Uh, I yeah, got, 10 and 10 a half. Yeah. 10 and a half with a 46 total. Um, so, so the, 46 nothing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's a chance. Uh, 35 nothing and then the garbage time touchdown for the Jets. Uh, <laughs> but so a play I'm looking at, I'm a little concerned about it, but as long as Crowder is healthy, I know he's been limited. As long as he plays, I should hit pretty easily. Uh, Diggs over 79.5 receiving yards, and Crowder over 4.5 receptions. Uh, Diggs, of course, the Bills will be without John Brown, if you didn't get that injury news. Um, And Diggs will just dominate without uh, John Brown. We saw one game earlier on in the season, I think two weeks ago, without John Brown, and Diggs had 16 targets, 10 receptions for 100 yards in that Tuesday night game against uh, the Titans, uh, who have a decent defense. I mean, not the best, but not the complete worst like the Jets. Jets are giving up the 10th most passing yards in the league, which 
I'm sure that's more game script oriented. If they were in close games, I'm sure they'd give up like the third or fourth most uh, passing yards. But people start running on them after they get a big lead. So Diggs could go over. You want Diggs over by the third quarter, I would say. Like yeah. by, towards the end of the third quarter, if you don't have Diggs over, or you want him within like one catch, so like maybe like 70 yards him being at. Uh, but that's my only concern with it. Uh, game script. Uh, we know Crowder's going to get amazing Graham script, and he is just three straight games with seven receptions, leading the team in targets. Huge target share. Bills struggle in the slot, um, and they struggle in garbage time, too. I've seen second half, really. Uh, I think I looked it up last week. They're giving up. I think they have, like, their plus 35 point differential in the first half, but, like, minus uh, 35 or 40 in the second half. Uh, not including that KC game because it's Kansas City. So, of course, they're going to lose that. And it was all rainy. and So it's a tough game to measure up uh, compared to their all the other games this season. But, yeah, uh, Crowder should end up with five catches in the second half, really. Um, so I don't really care what he does in the first half. If he gets, like, two or three in the first half, I'm happy because I know he's going to get four or five in the second half during garbage time. We could see him get four three or four on the final drive of the game. Uh, and I think, is Sam Darnold healthy enough? That's another <sighs> concern. Um, but the low ADOF for Crowder, uh, if uh, Darnold's not fully healthy, uh, we could see a lot of slants or drag routes to Crowder from the slot, which, I mean, we just need receptions. We don't care about yards. So if he has five catches for 10 yards, 15 yards, who cares? <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, we should see a large target share from Crowder again this game, and Diggs, of course, his ceiling's probably 150 yards. Uh, I guess <laughs> he could just he could get uh 50 yards on one play. I mean, I do not trust the Bill- the Jets defense at all. Uh, all their corners are graded just poorly on PFF.com. They're one of the worst in the league. They're giving up a high yards per route run. Mm-hmm. Uh. And I think he's going to be lined up against this year uh, most of the game, but Diggs goes all over the place, which this year is the best cornerback, according to PFF, uh, grade-wise. Uh, so when he moves around, he's going to get even worse cornerbacks. So, I mean, I just expect Diggs to just dominate this game. Uh, if he goes under just because Josh Allen ended up throwing 150 yards and they were committed to the run again, uh, which was Zach Moss back, they could. Uh, but I just love both these two ceilings. They could easily go for... Diggs easily could go over for 100-plus yards. Crowder, 8-9 receptions pretty easily just because that's probably going to be their only offense. Uh, I think Tredavious White is questionable, so if White's playing, expect Perriman just to be completely shut down and expect dump-offs to whoever their running back is now. I know Frank Gore is not going to get him. Perrine. Perrine, yeah. So expect yeah, some yeah. dump-offs to Perrine. Expect some quick out routes to uh, Crowder just to get any offense going. But I'm expecting the Bills to dominate this game pretty easily. Uh, <laughs> Nothing. I mean, I might take their 10. I don't like taking double-digit spreads, but I might just have to take Well, fun, and fun fact, guys, I told Joey this uh, pre-pod, Jets haven't covered a game all year. So. And if I bet on the... Uh, Bills, they'll probably cover. Uh, the Jets will probably get their first cover of the year. They're, so uh, bad. <laughs> they're just, they're just embarrassing. They got to trade for Fitz again and get Fitz back there. So they can yeah. Well, when you're starting running backs, Gore, who's what forty years old. <laughs> yeah, uh, no teams just when they ever they sign Gore, just don't don't get their running back. Whoever teams Gore's on, it's just. And I don't even think Darnold's that bad. It's just he has zero playmakers around him. I mean that. Yeah. yeah. Darnold's good. He's young, too. He's younger than Joe Burrow. Um, yeah. I, I mean, so. and I know people want to give up on him, and I know there's a lot of talk, oh, Trevor Trevor Lawrence, Jets, Trevor Lawrence this, but I don't even think Trevor Lawrence could succeed in this offense until they get some receivers, some running backs, O-linemen. I mean, this Jets team all around is just awful. Yeah, I was watching – I was listening to a podcast, uh, one of the Bar School podca- podcasts, and uh, uh, what's – Primetime was on uh, – and he said that he should pull like an Elway or uh, Eli and just not not sign with the Jets if the Jets get the first pick. Because <laughs> it's like it's yeah it's a bad organization. I hope Darnold gets traded and gets to a good organization because he could be good. 
Yeah. Uh, but he's just in a bad spot. Um, just trade him to trade him one of the teams like the Saints or the uh, Bucks who are about to lose their quarterback in one or two years. And I'm yeah. sure he can succeed. Um, yeah, probably could. Yeah. So. But and they'll have one, one pick this year. So trade back, get, you know, four or five draft picks and draft some fucking receivers. Yeah, you could. Uh, it's a good draft for receivers and tight ends. You can get the good draft. tight end, good receivers. Uh, maybe get some O linemen uh, for the Jets, and uh, Darnold can succeed for yeah. sure. Uh, it's just it's just a bad spot for him. There's there's no way he can succeed. Yeah. Maybe even trading to Washington, I'm sure he could have success. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just it's a bad situation for Darnold, uh, and there's just nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's uh, just yeah. some of these organizations just suck, and they're just never gonna get better. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's move on to prize picks. Unless you have anything else. No, I love I love. So usually I like the monkey knife fight board better than the prize picks board, but today I love the prize picks board better than monkey knife fight. Uh, yeah, you know, I love it a lot. I love just pairing uh, whoever I uh, want. And not have to deal with uh, Monkey Knife Fights pairings. Yeah, there's like 10 plays I love on price picks. I'm not going to give you all 10, but... Oh, um, that's not nice. There, there's a lot of plays on here I love. So, I mean, you have Elliot at 20.5, same as Monkey Knife Fight. You know what to do there. Yeah, you can get Terry and... Scary Terry and Elliot. Uh, Terry's 16 compared to 16 and a half, so... Yeah. If you can Terry. only play prize picks, then uh, you can head over here. Yeah, but, um... There's definitely well, a lot of good plays on the board. Yeah, here. let's talk about hmm, who do we want to talk about. Like Joe? Mustache Man over here, Gio Bernard. No, I mean I looked at him yesterday, but I'd probably end up going under on him. But the dump offs scare me a little bit. Yeah, I mean he'll be involved in the passing game. He's probably gonna have uh, got five or six targets, uh, yeah. which you could break one of those easily. Let's talk about one guy. How about this, Chase Claypool? Guy's been on fire. He has uh, Deontay, Deontay Johnson's Paul. back, right? He's back though. So what? What would do? The, what would that do to Claypool? I mean, surely they still play Claypool, right? Uh, Probably. yeah. So the issue is James Washington's been really good too. Um, yeah. so it's gonna be a tough situation because they got. I mean, Juju will still get his role because he's in the slot. Uh, but you're stuck with three outside guys. I mean, Deontay Johnson's not gonna lose his spot at all. So I'm expecting a. A little share from Chase Claypool and um, James Washington. Uh, just because it seems like James... I mean, Claypool's been amazing, obviously. But uh, Washington's earned a spot as well. Uh, and I'm not expecting a full workload again from Claypool, but it's all real speculation. Uh, it's tough to, yeah. so tough to really Claypool tell. Rap play. Yeah, I mean, Claypool makes a great ceiling GPP play, but... Those are tough to do um, for uh, props. It's just one of those. Yeah. There's some players you just can't play props for, um, and yeah. he's going to be one of them this week because uh, I think, was he playing Deontay Johnson's side, I think? Yeah. He hasn't done much with Deontay Johnson back. Correct. Um, um, I just wanted to throw him out there, Joey, because 13 is a low score for fantasy, and people see that name and that number. And they all going to want to jump on the over. So I want to caution people: be careful because Johnson is back, and we're not we're not quite sure the workload Claypool will get. Yeah, I mean they're manufacturing touches for him, which makes it seem like he's gonna be still involved. He was a yard away from scoring two touchdowns. I know he had a rushing touchdown both game, both the last two games. Uh, he didn't get the targets. I wanted him to get like he got eleven the first game. Uh, he was featured, and then four the next game. Uh, but he's getting touches inside the five, which gets his touchdown upside way higher. But I'm not sure if he's gonna get those still. I wonder what his touchdown prop is on DK Sportsbook. Cause I mean I'm sure some people are like, oh yeah, he'll get a touchdown, and then he'll go over. Yeah. But if you look at his touchdown prop, which is a way to look at the probability he does score. It's plus 220, which okay. the implied odds on plus 220 is about, I would say, 33%, I believe. Uh, maybe 30%. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's pull up the uh, 
plus 220. Implied odds are 31%. So he has an implied odds of getting a touchdown 31% of the time. Which, if you're relying on a touchdown to go over, I would not. Because the yeah. data says no. Uh, but I do like his touchdown prop. Just because mm -hmm. he is getting carries inside the five, which you never see out of any receiver. And that's what you... It's a good predictable thing for touchdowns. But I don't know with Deontay Johnson back if he's going to get him. Is the only issue. Yeah. Um, so if Deontay Johnson wasn't playing, I mean, I'm sure his touchdown odds was going to be plus 150 or something. But with Deontay Johnson playing, I'm going to avoid that. I'd go under on him, if anything. Yeah. Uh, because if he gets ends up getting four catch fifty yards, you're really relying on a touchdown. Um, yeah. And that four for fifty is probably pushing it as well. Uh, I don't know what the projection. Let's see what the projection portal has him at. Uh, let's go to wide receivers here. Chase Claypool. I mean, he is at thirteen point one, thirteen point six three. Which does yeah. seem a little high for me, but Tennessee's defense is bad, and I guess he is rejected to get a full workload, but I'm a little nervous that James Washington does get the work uh, and gives him like maybe a 70-30 split uh, for passing routes is yeah. my only concern, but obviously if that doesn't happen, he probably will go over if he's getting featured, uh, but it's just tough to tell right now. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Um, I'm not. We're not going to touch on Kamara on price picks. There's going to be an article out later later today um, talking about Kamara and why we like him. Um, so make sure you look for that article. You're trapping um, people into reading your articles. I see. Yeah, of course you got to you got to read my article. Um, but I like Kamara over. But you know that gives you kind of a description of why we like the over there. Uh, yeah, so he's projected on the site for 4.5 receptions for 50 yards, which is kind of what I said, 4 for 50. And he's projected yeah. for a carry for 5 yards, which if he does get that, it's most likely inside the 5. If he gets a carry or two inside the 5, he can easily score. But he's got a 54.54 odds of scoring the touchdown there. So definitely good odds for a touchdown score if you're playing on DK Sportsbook. Um, yeah. I I would agree with you there. But other than that, I would, I mean, DK Sportsbook's getting in a lot of more states, so I'm sure a lot more viewers that are watching this that can play Monkey Knife and Prize Picks can play DK Sportsbook. So I don't mind playing the plus two twenty on him. It's yeah. pretty good odds. I was expecting one fifty, but plus two twenty is definitely value. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, but ah. Uh, not much. I mean, like I said, I don't want to give out too many free stuff. I want to say that for Discord. But I would say, you know, between the three different boards, there's about 10 guys on here I could I could go over on or under on. Yeah, so. I mean, we talked about Adams early on. We love the 85 over. Um, yeah. So that's, let's say, nine points for 90 yards. And he, I'm sure he'll get eight or nine catches and a touchdown. So, I mean, yeah. I like the over on yeah. him. Uh, Julio's tough. Uh, Henry I'd probably lean under on just because he's not a pass catcher and Pittsburgh defense is just so good yeah. um, those are so I like the over on Adams, under on Henry Diggs is there at 17.5 I expect oh. him to dominate I mean he might go over without a touchdown so don't mind yeah. that at all uh, we touched on Zeke over and McLaurin over um, yeah, since you can't see my screen I'll I gotta make sure to. Uh, so I like Henry under nineteen, uh, Adams over twenty and a half. You got Zeke at twenty and a half. Uh, we like the over there. Diggs over seventeen and a half. Uh, McLaurin over sixteen. We like. I'd probably take the under on Geo. Uh, fifteen. Uh, I don't mind that. Uh, Crowder over fourteen's close. I like his catches, but I'd avoid his fantasy prop because. I mean, he could end up with eight catches for 60 yards, but it's it's close. Um, hey, Joey. Yeah. We're not supposed to talk about every person on the board. <laughs> it's just what I'm leaning. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. Oh. Yeah. I mean, they're not, like, exactly where I'm going, but, I mean, I'm touching what we talked about on yeah. Monkey Knife Fight. Uh, um, be careful with DeAndre Swift. He's at 12.5. He had a great game last week. He's in a good spot against Atlanta. Because um, he's the pass-catching running back there. 
but I'm not so sure on his usage. So I will. Yeah, I think he got forty off the top of my head. I think he got forty percent of the snaps, which it's tough sustainability. I mean, it's a good matchup, but it's tough. I think there's somebody with a better matchup on that board. So yeah. I mean, I don't mind T. Higgins right next to him at 13. Uh, we saw last week he was used. He got over 100 yards, even with a good A.J. Green game. So, I mean. They need to trade A.J. Green. Huh? I said they need to cha- uh, trade A.J. Green. Oh, yeah. He, he, I, don't think, I mean, there's too many receivers. I mean, Boyd, Higgins, Green, Ross. Uh, yeah. There's one more. Uh, Auden Tate. I mean, they got to trade at least one of those guys. They're all good. Um, yeah, get some get alignment for him. We get some draft picks and draft alignment because Burrow is just getting destroyed. Yeah, um, I agree with you. So, yeah, there's nothing else I like on the board though. Yeah, I mean, first look, there's just I haven't really dug into prize picks that much, but first look, there's a lot I like. Uh, I mean, Mike Davis is getting a million catches, so I'm sure he'll go over. Um, yeah, we're not gonna run the boss against him, so. Yeah, so if he can get 10 catches and a touchdown, I guess. Uh, but I'm sure they'll get some dump-offs. Uh, but 18 that's a little high. Um, yeah, that's, you got to get a touchdown for that, I think. Yeah, he just is so involved in the passing game. Uh, yeah, there's, I mean, you got Ridley has got a good matchup. Um, and Sam, he should be back soon. I think week nine he's expected back. Okay, he was expected back a little earlier, but I don't think I don't think they wanted to rush him. Um, yeah, darn it, I love CMC. I know. There's no reason to rush him, especially after they just give him a huge contract. Yeah. Um, they don't want to ruin his uh, their investment in him, which uh, you can you tell go. the difference between a $1 million a year running back versus a $13 million a year running back. They actually care about them. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about money. Um, and then, yeah, there's some quarterbacks. I won't touch on them, but there's some quarterbacks that like in really good matchups. Uh, and then we have some defenses we like too. Um, so oh, hop yeah. in Discord, fifteen dollars a week, not too, not too bad. No, never. You think uh, Miles Garrett's gonna go over? You want to do some IDP? Heck no. <laughs> Hate that stuff. I don't know why they post that stuff. I, that's so unpredictable. I wonder if people actually play him. I mean, I could see Miles Garrett actually uh, destroying this does. game. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's. I know he's tried playing. I mean, he's What's lost that? every time. <laughs> Yeah, what do you? I don't even know what the scoring on it is. Um, one point per tackle, one point per sack, or some two points per sack. Do you get two credit points. for the tackle and the sack? I guess so. Like, I can see Miles Garrett getting two sacks, two or three sacks this game. Um, this, yeah. uh, let's see here. It's one point per sack, two for a pick, two for a fumble recovery. Oh, mm-hmm. they got rid. Tackles. No, this is the. I don't think they have scoring for the IDP. So that's just. Oh yeah. That's yeah, the defense right. special team scoring chart. So I'm not sure where the. Uh, it must be an NFL normal NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Here's normal NFL. One point per tackle. Two points per sack. Two points for interception. Two points for fumbles. Recoveries, not forced fumbles. You get nothing for forced fumbles, and then the touchdowns, obviously six. So I don't know if you get three points per sack because it counts as a tackle too. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and they count ta- uh, unass- uh, assisted tackles as a tackle too. So. Oh yeah, I mean it could be if I had the time to look into it. I just don't feel like looking into it. But. Yeah, I'm not looking into it. I guess late. you can do linebackers against a team who's going to run a lot, because uh, I'm sure they'll get a lot of tackles. Um, and then, I mean, you can't really play cornerbacks or secondary just because you're really projecting a pick or not. Which you could just yeah. end up going under. Or if the guy's going to get targeted a lot, uh, you can maybe go over because he's going to get the tackles off the catches. Yeah. But who knows? Who knows? I haven't really looked into it at all. Um, then we got some good kickers. Uh, so, yeah, there's some. I like prize picks this week. I might go heavy on prize picks and light on uh, Monkey Knight. Well, I already went heavy on one play, so. Yeah. Uh, I just went like five plays worth of money onto that, so. I might just play one or two plays on. I might just play the maybe one or two more plays from Prize uh, Monkey Knife Fight and play like five or six from Prize Picks this week. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like a pretty good week. Yeah, we'll bounce back this week. I know it. Yeah, we don't go. We don't go that long without bad week. I think our like worst losing streaks like two weeks. So. 
Yeah, yeah. So I was looking back at last year. We went, I think, we only had, I think, four losing weeks, and only one of them, and two of the four came back to back. So um, I'm, I'm personally, my plays, I know I'm four, four and two for the week. I mean, for the year. So went started off the year four and zero for profit, and last two weeks I've been kind of dead. Yeah. Not, not by on purpose or anything, but injuries and fumbles and weather. Yeah. And just. I mean, completely, but two weeks ago we had a really good week on Sunday, and then we just went ham on that second half in the Vikings game. Yeah. Because I mean, obvious. I mean, Madison went for a hundred yards rushing, and all we needed was fifty yards to nail a two for two, a three for three, a five for five. The only thing that missed yeah. was Cook's part. So I mean, that was just unlucky. So technically, we should have had a good week besides that injury. Um, yeah, but, I agree. And then the Keenan Allen injury the next day. Um, and then you killed the Buffalo. I don't think was that last. Yeah, that that was a week. Week. Yeah, I mean we had a decent week two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. I mean we hit all our full game stuff. It was second half where we got screwed by injuries. But yeah, sometimes you get trapped yeah. into a nice second half play, and then Kirk Cousins throws two quick interceptions, and Cook gets hurt. Yeah. So, uh, so game script can be flipped like really quickly, um, but it's not common. You just get unlucky with that. Um, yeah. But there's no locks in fantasy sports. It's you could have a ninety nine point nine percent chance hitting and it still misses just because an injury or anything like a Miles Sanders seventy five yard rushing touchdown. So <laughs> yeah, um, it happens. But yeah, that's why you don't play too much money on a prop um, unless you know the risk involved. If you're willing to risk. A hundred dollars on a prop when you normally play only twenty dollars on a prop. Just know you could still get screwed. Yeah. Bank roll management. I All agree. right. That's it for me today. You got anything else? Uh, I got nothing else. Just join our Discord. Come, come talk some football with us. Come tilt some football with us. We're gonna have a grand old party tomorrow. Join us. Yeah. All right. See you next week. See ya. Go Bucks. <laughs>